Okay, this is an overview of the assembly for Rekbox 2.5. The tools you're going to need are a Phillips screwdriver, a pair of flush cutters, and optionally a pair of needle nose pliers. I'm going to start by unboxing Rekbox. Depending on what version you got, yours might look a little bit different, but everybody should have at least the bill of materials with the panel key and the index of all the parts and a diagram and make a note there is an interactive 3d model uh, CAD model that will be really useful to have up in reference so if you have your phone or an iPad or a computer nearby uh, pulling that up so you can zoom in and get as much detail as you need is always a good idea okay we're gonna take a quick inventory of what we got this is the parts tube this should include all of the required fasteners and uh, hardware. We've got our 3D printed parts kit. We have our slip rods. Okay, and go ahead and take the panel, the main panel set out. Take the packing material off. Okay, you should notice you'll have your sets of side panels. These may look different depending on which version of the box uh, you got. We're doing the retail version currently. the interior panel set is shrunk wrapped together it may also be zip tied you can get a pair of scissors or your brush cutters Again, there may be some zip ties holding your sets of panels together. Snip them with your flush cutters or a pair of scissors. Okay, it's important to notice with the clear acrylic that there is a protective film on both sides that you're going to need to remove. But before we do that, we're going to start breaking out our pieces and making sure that we've got everything that we need. It is normal for them to be tabbed together and sometimes some parts will get stuck and that's fine. So go ahead and start by carefully separating everything else. You'll note out everything out. And if a tab is a little bit too stiff or hard to take off, you can notice a pair of pliers or flush cutters will be handy and start setting stuff aside. All of these should break away relatively easy. If you're really having to force it, make sure you're paying attention. You look carefully. You shouldn't have to snap anything away. And when we're done separating, you should notice a few remnant pieces. Those are okay to toss. This is a tool that we're going to use later on to help, but it is part of the panel set. You'll notice that there's a series of tabs along here that lock some of these together. That's fine. You should be able to just break them apart by hand like this. And we can reference our build of materials in a second to make sure that we have everything. Now you'll see there are some really fine border pieces. This is scrap 
throw that away. But there is no scrap that's over about a millimeter thick. So any of these, these are all usable pieces. You'll notice this is a piece of scrap as well. Anything here that's less than four or five millimeters. Cost. Okay, we're gonna leave this in place for now on the on the standard version. This stays in place. Uh, on the premium version, you're, you'll knock this out and your hygrometer goes there. But to start, let's just leave it in place. You'll notice we have two of the same of the top and bottom panels, that's normal. And it's normal that there may be a little acrylic hole knockouts and stuff left over from the cutting process. Just toss those aside. Okay, once we've got everything separated, go ahead and take a look and check off that we've got all the panels we need. This is panel one, and this reference material is also available on the online build guide. Top and bottom. You can start to find your matching pieces. You'll notice the design. Just about every one of these panels is symmetrical to make it easier to put everything together. And that helps you have to not worry about top and bottom, left and right as much. Okay, once you've gone through and verified you have the correct number of pieces, there should be, in the current version, 32 pieces in total. Looks like we have everything here, so that's good. I'm gonna set the bomb aside. Okay, there's a trick. When you're removing the film, yes, you can use your fingernail to start to peel it, but if you have a hard time doing it with a fingernail, one trick is to use a pair of flush cutters and just at the very lightly at the corner, just squeeze the flush cutter together and you'll see that it grabs the film. And when you have both pieces of film removed, it will be very clear. You will not see any clouding or any scuffs or scratching once you've got all the acrylic removed. If you're concerned about getting fingerprints on everything, you can certainly wear gloves while you're doing it. I'm not currently, but you're welcome to do that if you want. And again, just grabbing the corner with a pair of flush cutters is probably one of the easiest ways to get the film removal started. And the technique I like to use is start both sides and then grab both pieces and remove them at once. And if you want to start with the big or the small, the film has to come off of everything at some point. So it doesn't really matter. You can see the film is pretty easy to Notice on the case of the lid panel, the film may still be left on where the R's and the circle are. You can just gently with your fingernail or a razor remove it. Looks like it came off mostly in one piece on the back. And you'll very much notice if you hold it up to the light that there'll be no clouding when you have all the films completely removed. <laughs> Typically the easiest starting point if you're going to use your fingernail is at the sharpest corners. And sometimes if you go too fast it'll tear the film.
Just go slowly. This is just an outline where your dome label is going to go at the end. And it's normal, there might be a little bit of residue from the uh, engraved process from tracing around where the label or the R's are. That's completely normal as well. If you're into nulling, I suggest this is a good opportunity to feed that addiction. There are a lot of parts to lay out and make sure you have. If you don't know what nulling is, look it up. It's a fun little hobby, obsession that a lot of people have. Just nicely organizing your parts in little rows. You'll get pretty quick once you get started with the film removal. And I know it's a little bit tedious when you're getting started, but it's a small price to pay for having a nice, clean, shiny rep box that shows off your filament so well. And once you get moving, it takes about 10 to 15 minutes, maybe. Put on some music, listen to a podcast or an audiobook while you're doing it. Great opportunity to multitask. These are the side seal bars. There will be six of them. And that's so you have a thick enough surface area for sealing gaskets if you decide you want to get the premium kit that has the seal gaskets in them. And if not, they just sit normally inside the box at the edges of the lid, waiting someday for you to get that premium kit. Here I'm starting at the sharpest corner of the part. It seems to be where I've had the best luck getting each of the parts started. And again, flush cutters makes short work of that. One of the things to look for, you'll notice that some of the tabs where the parts are nested together um, Maybe a little bit sharp, so you want to just be careful of that. If you're really concerned with it, you can just, again, go over it with some flush cutters or a light file or a razor knife and just snip them down. Okay, we got six of those. This is the lid brace, part number 14. Again, I'm not doing this in any particular order right now, just removing films from everything and laying it out nicely. Put it over there if you wanted to lay it out by number, you could. However, you find it easiest to reference and find parts in the future. I just like to kind of keep my narrower parts separate from my bigger parts.
And again, if you want, just you'll notice when you run your fingers over, if you fill just gently, it can be sharp. You don't want to cut yourself on the edge, but if you notice that there's any tabs that are protruding more than you would like, you can just give them a little trim. better you do to get prepped the faster the whole build will end up going sometimes a corner doesn't want to start so I move to another corner and that corner will usually comply Now you might think while the panels are all tethered together, you could try to grab the entire sheet and do it at once, but fortunately it's not that easy. I find it easier just to do the individual pieces uh, because wherever there's a laser cut, the film will inevitably just come right off. It doesn't really stick together that way on a whole panel set. But again, we're almost there. That's the top and bottom panel. There's going to be two of those. You notice some of these are very similar, but the whole pattern might vary slightly. These three or four, depending on which version you've got, are all exactly the same. And whenever we had an opportunity to use the same part, uh, we do just again to make assembly easier so you have less parts to have to hunt through to see which is which. Now, if you want to stack your parts. If you don't have a lot of space, you can certainly do that. Put a slip sheet, a piece of paper, or any of the packing material. I just found a sharp edge, so I'm just trimming that off. And again, gloves are never a bad idea if you're worried. Uh, also, if you're going to be snipping acrylic, you got to be careful because sometimes it can shoot off rather rapidly if you're using flush cutters like this. Uh, so, eye protection or just make sure that you cover over it so it can't fire a piece of acrylic into your eye. Safety first, everybody. Nobody wants a rep box assembly injury. All right, just got this and the side panels to go. This largest panel is panel number one, the back panel. guide and now I'm just going to separate my side panel sets uh, again depending on what version you got the packaging might vary slightly um, these are the inner side panels so there's uh, two sets on either end the inners have the holes and the slots cut in them to retain the rest of the panel and your outers if you have a just a standard Repcord retail version that you'll see the R's. And I'm just removing the outer shrink film first. And they're bundled differently, again, depending on your version. And then each of these are thicker. You'll notice these are thicker than the internals. That is totally normal. And they 
also have film on both sides. So again, make sure that you're removing the film from both sides and it'll be nice and clear when you do. being fussy just move to another corner one of them will be okay and i'm gonna stack these so i'm just gonna leave just a piece of film in between right now so we don't get anything too scuffed up to start and if you want to wait to remove the film until you need it uh that is also a strategy i prefer just to get all my prep work done first so that you don't have to worry about it and sometimes so you don't accidentally assemble it and realize you forgot to take the film off and then have to take it apart again. So let's do this. Let's I'm gonna stack the outers on the bottom because we need those second we're gonna need the inners first. Again, at any point, if I'm assembling stuff and it's not clear or I'm moving too fast in the video, obviously you can pause and rewind and scrub the video, but you can also use that reference, that online CAD model to spin it around, explode it, zoom in, get all that detail that you could possibly want. Now, most of the work that we need to do, all we're gonna need is our handy dandy Phillips screwdriver. So that's our go-to. Uh, on rare exceptions, you might want to use the needle nose, but I'm, we're not really going to need it. And once I've got the film and the trimming and all that stuff done, um, most of the work with this, the flesh cutters is over. Um, one other thing that we're going to need them for, though, let's open up the 3D printed parts pack tube. And you'll notice you have your handy dandy rep saver pack there so if you need a little snack while you're building you got your life savers and we'll take a quick inventory so you'll notice on any of the tubes that we have we have a checklist of all the parts here it's also on the bomb but you should be able to take a quick inventory based on what's right in front of you and in the case of the 3d printed parts we've actually uh, locked a bunch of them together so that we can get a quick count of everything so let's take a look here. Uh, it says we have a handle set. That's right, this is the handle set. These two parts actually go together like this. And if you have the premium kit, uh, the uh, lock set would go in here and allow you to actuate. And if you don't, you just fasten it together and it just acts as a handle to lift. So that's nice and easy. So we've got Handle set top and bottom, 13 pieces of the standard fastening bracket. So you can see I've got three groups of four, which is 12 plus one extra, that's 13. So you can count easily. You can break these apart. I mean, we'll ultimately need to, they should just snap apart by hand. So we can just separate everything. And this is where the flush cutters come in handy as well for some of this prep. Once you've separated all these pieces, Rid of that same with this we've got some small parts here so again you can pull them apart but just make sure you're not flinging them under the table keep track of everything you should have four precision Miranda spacers okay we're gonna have 14 of these flange nuts two three four five six and if you don't want to pull them apart by hand seven you can certainly use scissors eight or flush cutters 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, sorry, 13, 14, and that's our exit clip. And that's everything that we had on there. And if you want to just go through and trim off any of the extra little runners that we use to tether them together, you can just make a little pile of your bits. So I'm just going to quickly clean these up.
Now, most of these little sprues or runners or whatever you want to call them, they're just little folk, fake tether pieces are not going to really get in your way of assembly, but it makes everything look cleaner. Um, if for some reason you decide you want to personalize your box, uh, all of the 3D printed parts are available uh, for you to download and print in whatever color or material you want at any time. By default, uh, our retail is just a black PETG, um, but you could use PLA, ABS, carbon fiber, wood fill, really pretty much anything. They're uh, not uh, under a lot of strain or stress. Um, we like polyethylene because of the way that the fasteners, the thread forming fasteners uh, that we use seem to tap into them very nicely and, and hold and it's soft enough but rigid enough. Doesn't crack or split as easily as some of the stiffer materials. But again, if uh, for some reason you end up breaking one or just want something different, you can always print your own. They're very easy prints. And I just like to snip downward when I'm doing it so it doesn't shoot little plastic pieces all over the room if I'm paying attention to what I'm doing. Or you can put your hand over top of the flush cutter so you can catch the, the bits. And Once we've got everything trimmed, again, we can knoll it all out just so we can get a good look at it. So I've got all my brackets. So these brackets are universal and they're all the same. And so anytime I reference a bracket for any corner or any piece, you can just grab one of those triangular guys. Uh, you do have to make note of which orientation the holes are in for some of the stuff. But other than that, they pretty straightforward. Okay. I'm gonna start cleaning up my workspace so I don't get little shards of plastic all over my nice new rep box into the trash. If you haven't figured out by now to have a trash can handy for all your little scrap peelings and snippets and stuff is not a bad idea. Now while you're trimming the flange nuts you'll notice they are flat on one side that's intentional so that they actually index in and they basically act as a plastic nut that the thread forming screws tap into. And by having the keying, they're held obviously in place in a panel position so they do not rotate while you are trying to thread a screw into it. There is a method to the madness. And almost there. So like I was saying, just a couple minutes of prep work goes a long way to making the whole process smoother, easier, cleaner, more enjoyable. Take your time, have a lifesaver if you need it while you're going. I do not choose to pace out my lifesavers, if you're the kind of person that just wants to eat them all, swallow them immediately, that's great. If you want to pace them out, save them to the end, you can do that as well. All right, we have everything prepped. So let's look inside of our parts tube for our non-printed and non-laser cut pieces. Make sure we have everything. Oh, look at that. that was bonus one. You will only have one saver okay now there may be one or two laser cut pieces inside the parts tube uh, as well depending on which version which shipping version you get 
Uh, these are slightly thicker as well. They're the same thickness as the side panels. Uh, and depending if you have version 2.5 or version 2.5.1, if you have 2.5.1, you'll only have this inside the parts tube and you'll have four of these. And on 2.5, you'll notice there is a thicker one of these that has two notches. Again, that is normal for V2.5, not 2.5.1. Um, but they go in the same. This one is the reinforcement bar for the uh, wall mount. If you have the premium kit that has the wall mount. Um, and it's normal that it may be either thickness. It was just a uh, matter of using as much material as we had, but it's uh, perfectly sufficient in either thickness. So um, you will notice though as an indicator for the thicker one, because the holes are exactly the same, that there is uh, notches on it if you have the thicker one. And these little tabs on the end are intentional. Do not snip them off. Uh, they're not actually tabs. They're uh, meant for holding the seal bars in place on the side. That will become apparent later on. But now I have my thicker pieces as well, and maybe you want to set the thicker ones aside somewhere else. Okay, that's our lid prop. And again, you can look at the checklist on here and make sure everything should be checked off and signed off when you get it. This is the dome label that's going to go on the lid faceplate. Okay, now sometimes stuff can get stuck in the tube, so really make sure you might want to take off both ends and look through um, before sending support a message saying you don't have any parts, that nothing is stuck in one of your tubes. Um, parts pack C is all our exit plugs. Yes, we have that. This is our hinge set. We have that. This is our exit fittings. Parts pack D. And finally, a very important set, parts pack E, is all these screws, the thread forming screws or fasteners. We have everything. Get rid of that. Lastly, parts pack R has the roller set in it. And just trim this open and you're gonna notice again there's a checklist on it we have at the factory already taken the metal tube and threaded the printed sleeves these are polyethylene slip rods these are very important uh, and they are not rollers. They are actually designed so that the flange of the spool can roll very easily on it. It allows you to move spools around without having to realign bearings and other things. Uh, and if for some reason you feel like you have spools that don't work well with this, we also have optional uh, accessories like our rack rollers that do use bearings that clip on or rack stands if you want a traditional arbor mount. Lots of options. Also the for cardboard spools, now we have the Rotini and the Rotelli that they're the plastic ring liner that goes on so that it can work. Uh, goes over top of the cardboard so it can work with the slip rods. We're not going to need those for a bit, so we'll set them aside. Make sure they don't roll away. Okay, and we're going to make some more space so we can get started with the assembly. you've got a good work area to work you're going to want to have a solid surface that you're working on you're not going to want to do this on the carpet uh, if you do not have a rigid surface it's very easy to potentially break your panels again if you do break your panels we do offer uh, replacements at a discount um, to if you need replacement parts but obviously be smart assemble everything on a firm surface I'm going to keep my printed parts over here. I'm going to clear out the space immediately in front of me. And to begin with, I'm going to get all of the panels that have these half inch holes in them in front of me. Because we are going to start by plugging the holes while it is not assemble that makes life a lot easier to put these the seal plugs in 
um, I'm going to show a default uh, plug configuration. Now, depending on where you, how you want to use your red box, you may decide that you want to use the exit holes out the top or out the bottom. These can be removed and reconfigured and the panels can actually rotate as well. So you can have the exits close to the wall, away from the wall. This is the exit panel that goes at a 45 at the front. So if you're wall mounting, a very common configuration is if you have it on a shelf up above your printer, you're gonna come out here. You might choose to come out at the bottom. You may choose to put it on a shelf or underneath and come out the top, top toward the back wall. Um, it's not it's not the end of the world if you plug a hole and you decide you wanna change it. The whole point is so that it's modular. Your exit fittings are the holes that the filament can route out of. And again, if you decide you want to plug all of the holes and just use it for storage, you don't want to print out of, that's certainly an option. If you need extra plugs or extra fittings, we have those available on the website as well. But for right now, we're just going to start by doing a default setup, which is to plug the top and bottom and only use the six exit fittings out the front panel. So I'm just going to loosely lay on. Now something to take a look at when you laser, when we laser cut acrylic, the beam will deflect like a prism in a certain direction, which will cause kind of a, a sharp edge and a round edge. And if you put your finger over it, usually you can feel which is which. It's almost like there's a tapered or a, uh, a, uh, uh, a rounded edge to it. And it's a lot easier to flip over the panel and start pressing in your plugs on the rounded edge, not the sharp edge. Again, if you feel like one side is sharper than the other, flip it over so the sharp side is down and away so that you can press in more easily. If at any point you decide, oh, I didn't want to do that, that, that I'm going to use that hole for an exit fitting, you can just flip it over and pop it out, pop it out with a screwdriver, or your pliers. Um, I'm going to show you the default setup. And again, what you can do is you can put it in there and just get them started. And I like to use like the blunt side of the screwdriver. And you may find with these thinner panels, what's going to happen is that the plastic is going to start to push and seat. Uh, so if you have a soft surface underneath, you might leave a ring. Uh, you might want to put something else under, or you can just gently lift it up and use your thumb. And if you press it down, you can see it'll actually push through and potentially lock uh, the tab. So you can slowly pop that out again if you need to. But again, you don't want to do this in midair because that's when you're going to crack your panel. So if you do decide you want to support it with something else, you can put another piece directly under it. Or better yet, just put it on a hard surface and use your thumb or the back end of a screwdriver. And I'm just going to start by plugging all of the top and the bottom and then we're going to do every other so I'm going to lay out what the default configuration is so I'm going leave one open plug it leave one open plug it leave one open plug it one op plug open plug and that should leave six open holes so I would put an exit fitting here 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 on the front panel start by pushing in and then if I want to really lock it in, I can kind of just lightly press on the center until I see on the back side that it's created a nice dimple. That'll keep it from popping back out. Let's go slow. If it's not, you should never have to really force it to the point where you feel like something's going to break. Okay, when you flip it over, you can see if it's grabbing the lip. And again, you can always just pop it back out. That's good. I do not recommend a hammer or anything very aggressive if you have like a light 
that small small wooden mallet or rubber mallet or something you might consider that but again be very careful you don't break your acrylic trying to do while it's laying flat is to get it started in the hole and you'll notice too that you may have to if you put it in a little bit sideways if it's canted you're gonna have a lot harder time you might need to work work around the edges of the plug press from center and if it starts to tear up, you can always get a pair of flush cutters and try to trim and keep the hole close to you to work. Obviously, the further you're reaching, the harder it's going to be. And once they're started, you can lift them up and support from the backside and press with your thumb or the back end of a screwdriver or something just in the center of the divot. So I'm going to flip it over again. These are symmetrical, so it doesn't matter. It's just easier to press in from the side that has the taper, not the sharper side. Sharper side's going to fight you the whole way. Extras, you can hold on to those if you decide you want to plug them or you end up tearing one. That's normal. And again, if you want to make sure you press in the center till it locks around the outside, if you really want to make sure they're in there snug, you can do so. You're going to need to support the panel underneath as closely to the hole as possible. Again, not pushing too hard so you don't crack the acrylic. Well, a little bit of give but don't push it all right there we go so once we've done that we're gonna set one of them aside and we're gonna take our bottom the one that's gonna be the bottom panel so we're gonna flip it over so the side that's the inside of the box is gonna have the tops of the plugs like this this guy we're gonna set aside from now okay and then we're gonna find Two of the spacer bars, which is part number two on your bomb spacer bars, and this one you're going to have either two, or excuse me, you either have three or four of, depending if you have version one, or two five or two five one. Uh, you'll notice this one with the double holes is not it. You're going to have three with seven holes in it, like this. Okay, and we're gonna lay one end. You'll see the holes line up on the top and bottom, like that. Okay, and then we're gonna grab six of our brackets, and we are going to fasten them. We're actually gonna start with five, and I'll show you the sixth in a moment. And we're gonna get our parts pack E with our fasteners in it, and maybe you wanna pour some out where they're handy. 
to grab, make a little pile somewhere. I'm gonna need them regularly. Okay, and we're gonna start with the singular hole in the center of the bracket. So you notice one has two holes, one flat side has just a single in the center. So the two double holes on the short edge are gonna go toward the insides of the box in this arrangement. And I'm gonna start in the, in the corners. So I'm gonna just hold one underneath and I'm gonna run the screw through from the top and I can just hand start it and then I'll get my Phillips head. Now, you're gonna be tempted to wanna to use a power tool. Do not use power tools with the acrylic version of this box. It's gonna to be too easy to potentially crack. We try to make it so that if, if you uh, accidentally over tighten, uh, hopefully you're gonna strip the printed part before you crack the acrylic because you can always print another one, you're not going to necessarily easily be able to replace a cracked acrylic piece. Now, some of these holes are oval shaped. That's actually normal. That's intended. And that helps us with our final adjustment. So you don't have to tighten that all the way. And again, don't over tighten. When in doubt, just leave it somewhat loose. You'll get a feel for what needs to be snugged down. And I'll go over that at the very end. So I'm just doing the corners. Again, the same configuration. The double holes of the bracket are facing inward so that you're threading straight down into the centered top hole on all four corners. And I am choosing to orient my plugs so that they are in the back. So this is going to be the back of my rep box and you'll see the side that I'm going to fasten the third one. I'm going to leave the front center open for right now. But again, this is totally reversible. So if you wanted to spin this around so that your exit holes were at the bottom front, you could. That's a possible configuration, although it's kind of rare because you'll also have the exit panels in the front. So I always usually like to have these options for the back if you want to run down close to the wall into your printer. But we're going to rotate this so it's easier to work with. And Again, just put the screw through, orient the center top, and screw it in. Again, don't, you'll see there's some wiggle room. That's normal. Don't tighten it all the way yet. We're going to leave it loose so that we can get a nice snug joint at the end. This wiggle helps us get the joinery against the side panel as snug as we possibly can. But if you're going to default to tightening it, move it as close to the middle of the box as you can when you tighten it. So that when we put the side panels on, it's pulling the side panel as far toward the middle of the box as possible. Get a nice tight joint and make sure that your edges line up on the spacer bar and the bottom panel. Okay, that looks good. Now I'm gonna do the center rear. This is gonna be the rear of my box. In this configuration, you may decide to configure your box differently. And again, if you change your mind in the future, you can always take it apart and twist it around. No big deal. Easily reversible. Okay, we're just doing the center. Again, same orientation of the bracket. Two holes on the short side of the bracket facing inward. Now, for the front, we're gonna do something a little different. We're gonna get this different 3D printed part. This is our exit clip. This is part 30 on the bomb of your printed parts. And you'll notice there's a hole here. This is a through hole. We're gonna take a single screw and we're gonna place it right through the center there. And then we're gonna put it in the hole. Then we're gonna take our bracket and again, same hole position, the centered hole on the top so that the two holes are facing inward. And we're gonna tighten it 
again, don't over tighten anything, but we're going to orient it so that the exit clip is like this. And this is what holds the exit panel at a 45 and locks it in nice and rigid. So again, you don't need to over snug it if it's fine, if you can still kind of rotate it. Okay. And that's our base assembly. Pretty easy. Now we're going to grab panel number one. That's the rear exit panel. And what I like to do is fasten it to the bottom first by tipping it upwards like this. It'd be hard to see depending on the angle here, but I'm going to turn it around so you can see from the back. And I'm going to start in the middle here. So you can see right here, I'm going to, I'm going to line up the bottom center hole with one screw and I'm going to align it with the bottom hole of the bracket. And I'll give you a close up in just a second. I'm going to tighten this up. So there's two holes. One of them looks kind of oval, like the top hole is kind of oval. That's the wrong hole. We want the bottom one that looks nice and circular right here. And you'll see we're going to have a couple millimeters of a gap. That's, that's normal. This is not supposed to line up. There's going to be a little bit of overhang there. Totally normal. And then we're going to do the same thing on the top and the bottom holes. I'll tip it down so you can see. Again, the bottom hole of the bracket. Do not over tighten, especially at the corners is where the risk of cracking the acrylic is greatest if you overdo it. No need. It's not under heavy load. There's no need to torque it down. Just just until you feel a little bit of resistance and stop. That's it. Okay. So here's a closer look. You'll see where I've got the screw in each of the bottom brackets and I've got my rear panel tethered to the back or to the, to the base. Okay. We've got our back panel on our base panel. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take five more of our brackets here and we're going to attach them to the rear panel, panel number one, uh, in a hook configuration so that if you choose, you want to wall mount it. When I say hook, you're going to see these double holes of the bracket are going to line up with these double holes here. Now, before we just run it through here, though, we have to get our reinforcement bar. That's the other one that looked kind of like our spacer. So this is a spacer bar. That's not the right one. It's the one with the double holes in it. You'll see here we've got double holes. That's the one we want. This is our rear reinforcement bar and it's part number three on the bill of materials. Bomb. So you can just hold it there by hand. I'm going to start with the center one and I'm going to take a screw and I'm just going to press it through. And if you want just to let's take a second screw and just press it through there just so it stays in place for us. That's easy, right? So you see, I just kind of held that in place with some screws and then I'll reach over the top here. And again, I'm taking the double holes on the short side of the bracket and they'll line up with the double holes in the box. I'm doing this. I'm going to spin this around because I'm right handed and you should be able to see here at the top of the screen that I am screwing these into the bracket and again it's in a hook configuration okay take my brackets out from under there hook configuration like this so that when the french cleat goes in here if you want to uh, wall mount it it allows it to hang on the cleat okay so I started with the center then i'm going to do the other set of double holes to its left and right side Let's see what I'm doing here off screen. Move that over a little bit. Again, do not over tighten. There is no need. This is plenty strong and we're going to have a top reinforcement as well. So it's nice and beefed up. Okay. Got three hooks, but we need five. All right, for the, starting to knock parts around, slide those over. For the corner right here, 
we're going to still use the same orientation, but we're only going to put it in the side closest to the center of the box. So when it is done correctly, the bracket will be flush with the edge of the panel and the reinforcement bar. And again, this is an oval hole, so we're going to bias toward the center of the box and can leave it just slightly loose, but the idea being that we want to snug that side panel down nice and tight when we're ready to put those on so we get a nice tight joint. Spin this around and do this side. Again, you can see we're just using this out the side of the hole that's closest to the center of the box. One hole will not get used. That is normal. And the bracket will line up with the side of the panel when it's done correctly. And since it's an oval hole, we're going to bias inward toward the center of the box. That looks good. So you'll see we've got all five of our brackets in a hook configuration. And that's that step. Okay. All right, next we are going to take an inner side panel. Again, that is the side panel that has the holes for the slip rod and all of the slots for the tabs that are on our center. So we're going to lay this flat on our table. Move this aside so you can see. And we're going to tip this in end, and you'll notice the slots for the back and the bottom are lining up. And we're just laying it in there for right now. It's a placeholder. Okay. And we're going to move this to the side. And if you're worried about, you can, again, if you want to leave the film on or something under it or just gently move it so you're not scratching anything, you can do that. Okay, and then we're going to take our exit. We're going to do our exit panel assembly, sub assembly. And you'll notice this the we already put the plugs in the external exit panel so that's part number the outer exit panel part number nine on the bomb and the one with the hexagons is the inner exit panel and that is part number 10 and we're just going to lay the outer over the inner and you'll see the circle center in on the hexagon so those act as nut traps for the exit fittings and our holes, three holes here are going to line up. All right. And all we're going to do now is we're going to bring our tipped up box back into frame. We're going to line up the tabs of both of these. It's going to go right into this slot. And when we lay that in place, you'll see the hole here lines up with the exit clip, the printed exit clip. We're going to take a single screw. We're going to put it right through there and we are going to tighten it in to hold the exit panel assembly into place. Easy peasy. Okay, then we're going to take our other and this is going to be off screen for a moment, but I'll tip it down. We're going to take our other side panel and we're going to lay it on top. So it's a mirror image of what's on the bottom. You have to see the wide view for this. I'll tip it down in just a moment once I fastened it, I'm holding it in place. So if you're looking here, I've just laid it on top where I've lined my slots up and with the tabs, I'm setting it back in. So the tabs are all in place again, and it should all fit nicely in place. Okay, and then we're going to take our outer exit panel. So in this case, it's got the R's on it. And I'm going to put it right on top of where I had it before. And then I'm going to take two screws and fasten it at the base. And I'm going to do this and then I'll tip it down so I can show the camera. Just the two screws at the bottom of the box 
and one at the back panel. So there's three screws holding it. And I'll tip it down so you can see this. And then when I tip it, I'm gonna try to hold the side panel in place so that the slots come out. And you can see right there, I've done the screw here, here, and at the top corner. I'm gonna tip it up like this, put the other the other exit panel there, oh, excuse me, the other side panel on top and careful not to knock everything, knock the tabs out of the slots. And I'm gonna do three more screws, leaving the screw at the top rear loose, just one turn tight so it's in place, but I'm not gonna tighten it all the way and I'll show you why in a second. We're gonna actually undo these briefly to put the slip rods and some of the rest of the stuff in. So we're just gonna leave them all somewhat loose, but I'll... So I've done a screw at the bottom corners and the back, and I've left this one kind of loose so that I can pull the panels out if I need to. But again, if, if need be, you can always take the screw out. It's very easy. Later on. Okay. So... I usually put that together first just so you can get a sense of it, but the next thing we're gonna do is get the slip rods in place. And those are retained by these inner holes here. So to do that, I'm actually gonna tip it up again. And, and again, I wanna just loosen these screws so that we can pull the panel out and just gently slide that rod into place, but not necessarily remove the whole thing. So I've loosened the screws here and here and I'm gonna check my slip rods here and you should see that there's an exposed bit of metal on either end. And sometimes they're not totally centered so you might have to just kind of slide the, the outer printed part a little bit so that we have an even amount of exposed. It's about five or six millimeters. And I'm gonna pull the tab away. I'm gonna do the rear first and I'm just gonna slide that in. And if it needs to be a little bit looser, I'm gonna just kind of loosen this screw so it can come out. And I don't wanna scratch the acrylic, so I'm just gonna let it kind of come down and index in place. And then I'll cinch this screw down again. Just slowly, easily set it in place. That's the rear. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the front. And you know what, you may notice that the uh, exit panel kind of slipped out. That's fine, we can just kind of reset that back into place. So again, I'm gonna make sure that my slip rods, the plastic is centered on there and I'm gonna slide it into the hole in the rear. And I'm gonna work this out and remove the screw a little bit more, just enough to get the panel to move so I can get the rod in. And then I'm gonna make sure that my exit panels are lined up right here with the slot and tighten this back into place. Again, no need to over tighten. And I'm gonna take a quick look and see, and you'll notice if done right, the joinery should be nice and snug, and all the tabs should be in their space. Another thing to check is sometimes the opposite side might pop out as well. In this case, it looks like the exit panel kind of wiggled a little bit, which prevented me from tightening this all the way. So I'm gonna slide it over and cinch it down a bit more. Making sure nothing's in the way, and I'm gonna make sure that my bracket is able to go as far over and then press it in my hand, and then I can cinch that down so that it's 
nice and tight. So if done correctly, you should have a nice tight joint at both sides. Here the joinery should be nice and snug on this newer version. That's one of the enhancements of the newer version of the rep box. Next thing we're gonna do for, is we're gonna tip this on its back and we're gonna do the bottom, the base, what we call the plinth. It's a, basically the bottom reinforcement or stand, if you will. And for that, we're gonna need the two base stringers uh, these are part number, parts number 12 on the bomb. We're going to need the stringer support bar, and that's the one that's got these little oval holes cut in it here, which is part number 11 on the bomb. And the base faceplate cover, which is part number 13, base faceplate 13. So, very easy, we're going to, again, looking top down now, we're gonna take our stringers, and you'll notice on the back panel, there's two little slots for the tabs on the stringers to go, and you can just let them kinda hang free there when you put them in place. Okay, now we're gonna take our stringer support bar, and we're gonna make sure that the hole in the center and the side is closest to the bottom of the box. And then we're gonna lay it right on top here and line up the stringers so that they fall into place. So that should hold these nice and rigid. And then we're gonna get the faceplate, the base faceplate, and we're gonna lay it on top again, watching that the holes here are furthest away from the middle of the box. And then we're gonna take three screws and fasten it. One, two, three. Starting in the middle. And again, they're gonna thread right into the bottom hole of the bracket. Okay, now we're gonna set this assembly aside for the time being, and we're gonna work on our top panel and our lid. So, we're gonna find our top panel, that's the other panel that we've had the plugs on, and we're gonna decide where we want the plugs on our box. So do we want the exit plugs on the front? So perhaps we're gonna put this on a shelf beneath the printer and feed upwards from the front, or do we want them at the rear, rear of the box, so it would uh, the exits would be coming out closest to the wall. That is going to have to be a decision you make. I am gonna to choose to have the exit plugs on the front at the top, so. I'll orient the panel so that I'm looking at it from the top and then I'm gonna flip it over. So as if I was inside the box looking out and my plugs are pressed through. I'm gonna take two fastener screws and I'm going to put one at each corner at the front sticking up from the bottom and then I'm gonna lay it down on the table so that they're po poking up like screw posts. And then I'm gonna take my precision Ivan spacer and I'm just gonna press it over and down. That should help hold the screw in place. And then I'm going to grab my remaining spacer bar, not my thicker one. Again, this one that's thicker has those notches in it. I don't want that one. I want the standard spacer bar, the same ones that I used for the, the bottom of the box. And I'm gonna lay it on top of the spacer assembly like this. And I'm gonna get 
two brackets and what I'm gonna do is fasten these brackets on here like this and I could just tip it up and try to do it freehand but I find that if I move it just to the edge of the table here so that I can access the screw under, from underneath with the screwdriver I'm gonna orient the bracket so that the double holes are facing me so I'm threading into the center hole similar to the way that we did on the bottom like so double holes facing me and then I'm gonna tighten this screw here so again you can just do it on the bottom of the table if you want to hold it up and again we are going to bias since this is an oval hole we're gonna bias the whole thing slightly to the center of the box this way so when it's done you'll notice the two holes are facing the front of the box again do not over tighten it and what you're going to want to do is leave this a little bit loose because again because these are both oval holes you want to make sure these edges line up and this bracket is a little bit inward so it pulls the faceplate nice and tight that's good we're going to do the same thing on the other side again that's the hole we're trying to tap into and we're looking for these double holes facing outward like this and then I'm just gonna screw these in and bias it in the oval hole toward the center of the box good okay All right, next I'm gonna grab the th thicker of the bars that was inside the parts tube. This is part number 26. This is the top seal bar. And you'll notice these two little tab pieces that I mentioned before and this curve. That's gonna go toward the inside of the box. So you'll notice here they're gonna go right in between the brackets like this and they should almost be just held in place with friction and the little tabs at the end are gonna sit just on the top and it prevents it from sliding forward and we've got two d-shaped holes I call these d-shaped holes that are gonna hold our flange nuts so these are the 3d printed flange nuts I'm gonna press those in now you may notice again that there's a sharp edge and a smooth edge. And sometimes the sharp edge works toward our benefit. In this case, I find it easier to get the, uh, hold the flange nuts in place if it's held with a little bit of friction from the sharp edge. Um, that way if I turn it over, it doesn't just pop out as easily. Uh, if you were to do it on the smooth edge, you'll see, let's take this, oh doesn't quite retain the bracket in the same way and it can fall free. So that's just a little trick. It doesn't really matter because it's symmetrical and it's not a guarantee either. By default, we just make the hole, try to make the hole big enough so that you don't have to fight to get the flange nut in there. But again, look at that D profile and you'll, you'll just rotate it so that it fits in the hole properly. And these are what's going to hold the hinges in place. So we're going to grab our hinge set next. And it may come like this uh, with screws. We don't end up using these screws if it comes in a package like this. We're just going to take the hinges out. And if you have some other use for these little wood screws, by all means, put them to good use. Otherwise, you can toss them. Uh, the colors of your hinges may vary. Uh, these ones are nickel, sometimes they're black. Now, the hinge alignment matters, the, and specifically, you'll notice how there is a hinge pin. The hinge pin is always on the outside of the box. The hinge pin should never be inside the box. So again, this is upside down, which means the outside of the box is like facing the table. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our hinge pin side, 
and we're going to look at the hinge here and you'll notice that one side of the hinge has three pieces of metal holding the pin the other side has two attached to the pin it doesn't really matter which side is in just be consistent with both so if you have the three pieces of metal touching the pin on the side of the t on the top side then do the same thing uh, left and right so I'm gonna take the three sides and again the hinge pin down and I'm going to slide it in between the gap where we put the Ivan spacer, the Precision Miranda spacer. And then I'm just going to hold this with my fingers so I've lined up the holes. And stand it up. And again, just kind of pinching this with your fingers. And then grab a screw, push it through. You want to support the bracket on the back side. And we're just going to... Not snug it all the way, but we're going to tighten it so that we can uh, basically keep the the top retainer bar, the, the top seal bar from coming off. I'm going to do the same thing. And you'll notice there's some wiggle room on the hinge. That is normal. That is desired. That helps us adjust our final positioning so we have space for the lid prop and all that other stuff. So we're not going to snug this down all the way. That's, that's fine, we're gonna let that wiggle for now. And then we're just gonna do the same thing on this side. Again, paying attention to the hinge pin going down. And we're in the gap, again, that's closest so that there's three panels here. There's the top panel, there's the spacer, and there's the uh, top seal bar. The hinge goes in between the top panel and the spacer, not the spacer and the seal bar, okay? It's a close-up look of that. So first panel, the top panel, then the hinge, then the spacer. And again, I'm doing the same metal configuration. So I have the three sides of the hinge, same as I do on this side. And then I'm going to hold these in place with my finger, and I'm going to tip it up. I'm going to grab two screws and run it through the hinge, but there's going to be a little bit of play, and that is normal and desirable. And that can still wiggle, and the hinge pin is on the outside, so that's good. All right. And we're going to set that aside. And now we're going to do our lid assembly. So while it's easy, I'm going to take the faceplate. Faceplate is part number 15 on the bill of materials. And the side that has the engrave that shows us where to put our dome label. I'm going to peel our dome label off. You should see a nice shiny silver on the back side. And I'm going to place that right in the outline perfectly and press down firmly. And if it's a little bit cold, sometimes the dome label is rigid, but you get that adhesive to stick nicely. And you'll know it's stuck nicely when you look at it from the back side and you don't have any air bubbles or you can see that adhesive pressed firmly all the way around and that's how you know you have an official rep box right there okay we're going to take our lid which is the piece that has our r's and circle in it and the face plate goes on top of the lid like that all right now we're going to grab part number 14, which is the lid brace. So it's only got two holes, one in either end. Now this is an important part, and it's going to seem a little bit weird, but this is a process we call bowing the lid. We're actually going to create a little bit of a curvature to the lid. And the purpose for that curvature is if you have the premium kit with the seals on it, it holds the bottom corners tight because the rep box latches from the center. It holds the bottom corners tight to the seals on the corner by creating a little bit of an arc. So we call it bowing the lid because it's like a bow and arrow where we take the bow and run the, uh, the string from either end of the bow. And we're going to start by just lining up one hole. But you'd notice if you lay these on top, these holes do not line up. The holes on the 
Um, the holes on the lid brace are actually closer to the center than the outer ones, and that's what actually creates our bow. So we're just going to attach one end. We're going to take a single screw and we're going to put it through the faceplate and then through the lid and then through the brace, lid brace. And then we're going to take one of our flange nuts with the flange side, that's the fatter side, going to land right on the lid brace like that. And the way that we're going to hold this in place is with the tool I showed you at the very beginning. It looks like a drumstick. Our drumstick is our wrench in this case. So we're going to use that and hold that in place. And then we're going to tighten the screw from the other side. And we're going to leave this a little bit loose right now. So just a couple turns in, and that's fine. And by leaving it loose, that makes the bowing process a little bit easier. So then we're going to come around. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. But obviously, to get those holes to line up, Here's a, look, here's a look at how the holes do not align. That is normal. We're going to make them align. So we're going to take the screw and we're going to go through the two front. Okay, I'm going to put my finger in between the, the rod and this, and then I'm going to force it to bow so that I can push the screw post in. And you'll see from the end we've created a little bow to the lid. That's normal. And we're going to take another flange nut again with the flange side landing on the lid brace like that. We're going to take our drumstick tool wrench and hold it in place. And then we're going to tighten the screw. We can tighten it all the way. And then we can go back and snug down this one as well. So the reason we left this loose, like I said, it makes it a little bit easier to just land that hole when we're doing the bow. Again, do not over tighten it. No need, but you will see that we get a little bit of a smile here when we've bowed our lid and that is normal. So that's great. Okay. All right, next we're gonna add the lid trim clamp so this actually acts as a clamp if you have the premium kit that holds the hygrometer you would knock this out put the hygrometer in and then this would clamp the hygrometer to the face in this case we're just doing the standard kit so we're just going to take two screws and press it through the hole sometimes the hole might have a little bit of wispy left over from the printing process that's normal doesn't doesn't matter we'll just push it through the countersink nicely And push that through so it's going to line up like this and then we're going to do the same thing on the back side we're going to grab two of our flange nuts with our wrench and hold that in place and that just covers over the just trims it out nicely and it covers over the laser cut knockout If you wanted, there's an opportunity here you can customize where you could create a printed back place. You could put your own logo here if you wanted to knock this out, create a printed part that would go in. It would frame it nicely here. You could replace the R's with something fancy. It's another way to do it. You can put the flange nut inside the wrench to start and then line it up and screw it in. I'll give you a look at the back side. And you'll notice the, the screws do go through and stand proud. That's normal. They don't get in the way that's in the inside of the box. It doesn't really collide with anything. You can see it just kind of frames out the engraved piece nicely. Okay, next we're going to add our handle. Now again, if you have the premium kit, the lock set would go in this first before we would put the handle on. And we would have the two pieces move freely so we could operate the latch set. Uh, for the standard set, we don't need that. We don't have that. And so we're just going to take two screws and we are going to fasten our top handle to the bottom handle. And again, you'll notice if you look at the bottom, 
there's a slot that the handle slots right into and that will cause these two holes on the back to line up and so we're going to put a screw on the bottom and on the top and then we're just going to tighten these down to lock the handle together and in place and might feel a little bit snug at the end as it bottoms but just tighten when you have it tightened all the way the screw heads will countersink so that they don't interfere with the landing of the handle on top of the lid so then we place our land our handle make sure we've got it lined up right we place our handle on here and if we turn it over we're just going to take two screws on the back side and that's going to hold our handle on the lid in place tighten those in All right. And we're going to put our lid aside. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to add the lid prop. So I'm going to grab the assembly again. And you have your choice of adding your black metal lid prop here to either side. So this just basically acts as a kickstand to hold the lid open. You'll see at the very end. You can do it on either side. It's symmetrical. It just depends on how you prefer, if you're right or left-handed, or where on the wall you want to mount it, or whatever. If for some reason you feel like you want to have two of these, we do have extras of these available for sale on the website. Uh, but you really only need one. We're going to start by taking a single screw. Taking our remaining Ivan spacers, one, we're going to press the screw through the spacer. Then we're going to go through the lid prop. Now, it may not press. It's kind of a snug fit, so you can go ahead and just tighten it, screw it through if you want. Uh, and if you keep twisting, it'll just knock off the powder coating to the point where it should spin freely. It's not supposed to tap into it. And then we're just going to put another spacer on the other side to hold it off from the acrylic. And then we take one of our flange nuts and again lining up there's a D profile on the side panel set. We're just going to line up the flange nut to press into the side panel like that. So you'll see the flange, flange side hanging out on that. And then we can just tighten the screw, hold the flange nut with your finger on the back side so it doesn't press out. And just tighten that and you can make it just snug enough again you don't need to over tighten so it should have enough friction to kind of hold it in place but we'll see where it needs to so we're just going to keep it right there for now all right and then it's probably easiest now to go ahead and put the exit fittings in now your exit fittings uh when they ship sometimes these caps come off you're going to notice the way they work is uh these can tighten down and push on these teeth which will press against this silicone it's not silicone but it's a rubber gasket and that allows you to put ptfe tube if if you are running thicker filament you can put six millimeter or four millimeter you'll find that if you're trying to put ptfe in here and it's four millimeter you really need to crank this thing down for it to grab and if you don't feel like that engages the way you want we have a collet clip that helps tighten that uh, on there or you could always take some tape or something on the outside of your PTFE tube to help lock it in place um, so that's how that works now the nut you'll take that off on the back side sometimes it will come with a rubber gasket on this side sometimes it doesn't it is not necessary uh, it doesn't really make any kind of difference whatsoever but in this case I'll just leave them on we have plenty of threads um, and then you'll just take your nut and drop it inside the nut trap that's cut out on the inside of the acrylic and twist tighten it until the exit fitting is in place and then repeat the process for the other five
and you'll see there's some overhang that's completely normal so this is your filament path uh, to prevent the filament from obviously grinding on any of the acrylic and again to give you the option to run PTFE into the box if you decide you want to do that Now at any point, if you wanted to get extra exit fittings, we have uh, extra ones available for purchase on the website. Uh, this configuration is certainly not required. This is just kind of the default configuration if you had six kilos in here evenly spaced. If you're using some smaller spools, you might want to change the positioning of the exit fittings to line up with whatever spools you have in there. Uh, you can certainly just get extra exit fittings and line them everywhere and then create plugs uh, to plug the fitting if you don't want to deal with these. Uh, that way you always have the option to have a space to run your filament out of in the most optimal position for your spools. And there we have it. We've got all of our exit fittings in place. All right, last thing that we need to do is we're gonna marry the top panel to the to the box. Um, before we do that, we're gonna take our reinforcement bar. This is the top reinforcement bar. And that is the part 18 that came out of the tube if it's one uh, version 2.5. If you have a version 2.51 this will be part of the main panel set and it's the same it'll be a uh, spacer same as the other spacer so we're going to lay that on top of our hooks on the back this in so we can see and then we're going to take our top panel assembly that we did with our hinges and we're going to line up the tabs to the slots on the side panel here and here. And I'm going to slide it over. And again, I left a screw loose on this side so that I could basically slide the panel out and get the tabs in on this other side here and here. And once I've seen everything seated in there, I'm going to tighten this screw to hold it in place. And then I'm going to add a bunch more screws to really cinch everything together. So we're going to add a screw to the top here with the with the brace, the reinforcement bar, the top reinforcement bar in place. We're going to one, two, three, four, and five. I'm just going to set the screws in place really quick. Again, making sure that we're running through the reinforcement bar. And we're going to cinch them all down. Now, you remember I, I mentioned there's notches. That, that's just a visual indicator for if you have a thicker piece for reason, version 2.5 and not version 2.5.1. It does not matter if these notches are on the inside or the outside. Uh, it's, again, just to distinguish that it's a, a thicker piece, not the same as the spacer bars that we have in 2.5.1. Uh, and then we're going to add two more screws to the sprackets here on the side. Again, making sure that our tab and slots are still lined up. I'm going to cinch that down and making sure our slot lined up. And again, make sure you've biased this to one side so that we're pulling this as tight as possible and making this joint here as tight as possible. And the nice thing about this acrylic is you get a nice look through and see how everything aligns and fits. Should just be nice and snug. Everything is in place. The joint looks clean. Very happy with that. Now, if you decided that you were wanted to be just extra 
careful about your joinery and stuff. At this point, you certainly could get some clear silicone and just put a fine bead on your joinery here and here. I like to do it at the at the end if you're going to do it. Um, you certainly could do it like in between with the side panels, but then that if you ever decide you wanted to flip the panel around, change your whole exit configuration, uh, it makes it a little bit harder than to just kind of remove any silicone you would, would have here. The reason I recommend silicone is for that reason. It's it's semi-removable so that you're it's not permanently glued in. If you wanted to obviously use acrylic glue and glue the whole thing together, you absolutely could do that as well, but it's not coming apart again then. Okay, the last thing we have to do is attach the lid to the box. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to run screws from the back sides of the hinges through through the lid and then through the lid clamps which we're going to prep right now first so we're going to take our lid clamp pieces there's four of them and we're going to stack two on top of each other and then place the flange nuts that we have remaining through both I'm going to set that aside I'm going to do the same thing Again, it's a stack of two. The reason being we need the twice the thickness to hold the flange nut and the capture the excess screw. Okay, we're gonna tip, we're gonna flip over our lid and we're gonna flip over our rep box so it's on its top. And so that the hinges lay down like this. And we're gonna ed move it over to the edge of the table. And again, we're gonna lay the hinges on top of the lid like that and we're going to start by taking a screw and running it through the hinge and then through the hole of the lid and the faceplate and I'm just going to do one on each side to begin with just so that we can cinch it in place and it might be find it easier too to just take one of the flange nuts out again we're just gonna try to clamp one side and then we can tip it up and work with it more easily put your finger on the back side so it holds it in place and the closer you move this to the edge of a table the easier a time you'll have but I'm just holding it on the back side and using the the clamp as its own kind of wrench and that's pinned it in place and I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to just take one of these out so we don't drop it on the ground hold it in place with my finger and then come on to the back side where the screw is and tighten the screw into the flange nut Again, careful not to over tighten it. Now, it's important to note that the hinge, this is proper, the hinge does not get sandwiched in between the lid the way that it does on the top panel. The hinge is supposed to be on the very inside face of the lid. That is completely normal. The reason that is, is that if you have the seal kit from the, the seals from the premium kit, we need that to land clean and flush as possible on the face of this and so the hinge helps create that tight seal all right once we've done it the two you're going to find it easier if you tip it up on end and then do the other two screws holding the placing the flange nut in holding it there with your finger and tightening the screw from the opposite side through the hinge, through the holes. And it's okay if there's, uh, if the hinge isn't quite aligned right uh, to begin with. Again, remember, there's supposed to be some wiggle room so we can adjust it once we get it on there. So you don't have to tighten it. Again, don't over tighten. It's very easy to crack acrylic if you really torque down on it. 
just trying to get the oops flip it over and at this point we can bias the lid to the side that we uh, would like to leave us adequate space for the seal gasket or, sorry for the the lid prop and then we're gonna snug everything down and making sure that the Hinge pins are snug to the faceplate or the top panel. And if you look at it from the top and if you want to adjust the hinge so that the hinge pin is as tight against the top lid as possible. That's a good idea. A tighter there. And by taking the time to get this alignment right, you'll make sure the lid does operate smoothly and doesn't cant it in one direction or another that can uh, make the operation awkward. left to do is to snap in the sidebars and the easiest way to do that is one at a time if you prop the lid open you know look through the lid here but basically this might be easier to see too if I tip this up so these form the side here and you'll notice on the exit panel here on the inner exit panel there's a little spot for these tabs to lock into so if you start by wrapping the top around the bracket bring this in here and then just gently till it clicks in place we're gonna do that three times one and stacking and pushing as close to the side panel and lifting until it clicks to okay now the last one there's a small tab again that's on the top seal bar that holds all of these snug together and you need to make sure that this tip gets underneath that tab so you'll see if you look at it from the top It'll slide in. If you're having a hard time and it's a tight fit, you can just loosen this screw so that it'll get in there at the same height. And then just lock that third one in place. And that should be fine. So you'll have three on either, on either side. Again, this just serves a purpose as if you have the premium kit, the gasketing lays on top of this surface. Otherwise, it just creates a nice clean edge for when the box is closed. We're going to do the same thing on this side, and you can get a look from it over here what is happening. So I'm just gently leave that lid like that. Generally, you don't want it to land on its own, strain its own hinges that way, but just for the time being, it's fine. Again, snapping this, just gently do not pull too hard. You shouldn't need to pull very hard to get it to lock into its tab. If you uh, break it, 
Uh, we have replacements available for purchase, but just go, go easy. It'll flex just a little bit. You don't need to manhandle it. If you're really concerned with it, like I said, you can loosen these screws and just slide it into place, but the snap mechanism should work. You don't really need to pull it very much. You can see I'm just, all you have to do is get this little tab to get into its spot. And you're making sure you look at it from the top. These tips of those are going to stay on this side of the tab. That's what holds it close. And we've got three. And they're all locked in place. And there, and that is the assembly for the standard kit. You can see if you want to prop the lid in there, there's a little slot for the lid prop to go in. And if you want to have it on the other side, that will work as well. And there you have it, fully assembled RepBox V2.